So we have four agenda items up here. Uh, I had suggested when I sent you back my feedback on your cultural models, think of something interesting to share. Um, we'll have open mic questions, loose ends that you have. Uh, we'll talk about individual project ideas and a quick itinerary packing this review since this is the very last time we get together before January 3rd at the Majestic Hotel in Rabat, Morocco. So, um, what, I, what I'd ask you to do, and this is really quick, uh, for each cultural model group, tell us one thing that kind of stood out for you in what you learned when you were applying this to where we're going or, or to the model itself. So, um, how about the Bennett's model of intercultural sensitivity? Is anyone? Yes. Can you tell us something that sort of like you walked away with it with an aha or a thought or a question? <coughs> Yeah, since you're the, you are the group. I, um, I just, I don't know if you guys actually looked at it, but we found, we found um, this thing where it took it through as an educator, and since my group was all IE people, um, we're future potential educators of some sort, but as an educator, what you can do to challenge um, students to move through, to help them move through um, the different levels and, and even just when I was looking at it, kind of self-evaluating, like where do I think I am, what do I think I do, and you know, I think I have bits and pieces from here, and bits and pieces from there, and just, um, I just, that was the most informative to me. So how do you challenge people to move on, of course you all read it and you, you understand the presentation, um, but Bennett's model, how do you challenge people to move to become more ethno-relative and less ethnocentric mm -hmm. as an educator? Great. Um, how about Trumpenars? Anybody from the Trumpenars group here? Um, I think I would be like super specific because honestly it was like a month ago. <laughs> 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 With Chief, I have totally forgotten. Yeah. I remember when we were doing it. I remember talking to Pam and being like, wow, Morocco is the exact opposite of every one of our like values. Mm -hmm. And so I started getting a little nervous about how much culture shock I'm actually going to have going there because I've never <coughs> been to a country where everything is different, maybe a couple things, and you can sort of deal with it. But I feel like everything at once might be a little overwhelming. So I like, mentally prep myself for that. I think that's a real good point, be, be open to um, when you start to make a judgment about something, to be open to, wait a second, this is a whole different perspective. This is a whole different way of understanding the world. So, yeah. uh, Hofstede group. Do we have anyone from that group here? Yeah. Um, ours was pretty similar as far as being opposite, but there was some that was similar. Like, I, I worked on the section for. Um, masculinity, femininity. Right. And they were both pretty masculine cultures. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, but besides that, I think they were all opposite. And, uh, just, yeah, and, and we'll mention, one of the things we'll do when we're in Morocco at one of our meetings is I'm going to have the groups get together again in Morocco after being there for three or four days. And to kind of compare notes with what you studied beforehand now, how does that apply to what you're seeing and understanding? So, um, Hall, Edward Hall's group. I saw Don's name. Don's name is on this, so I know that at least one person is here. <laughs> our not. entire group is here, but our no res quote. Um, <clears throat> so we were talking. We focused mainly on high-low context, <laughs> and it, to me, anyway, it wasn't a big surprise what it, what we were finding. Um, personally. It's my international experience has, has resembled this anyway in terms of if contextual or high level context. Um, I also know it's probably it's the thing I continue to work on because it frustrates me more than anything else, and I'm always it's always at the forefront of my mind about mm -hmm. okay, what part of this communication did I not communicate? Why I'm getting this answer that I'm getting? <laughs> yeah. Okay, like I'm always asking myself. So that was I, there wasn't a whole lot of I 
I don't expect to find, personally from my international experience, a lot of differences. Um, I expect to have a lot of the same frustrations, you know, and I continue mm -hmm. to learn to how I, how I work through that. But at the same time, it would be great to see if I don't, I mean, it would be interesting to see if I don't, some of those expectations don't come true. I think that's so, a really, really good point. And, and think about, you know, I said out that thing about beginner's mind and mm -hmm. conscious mm -hmm. incompetence. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about it when you're going in there. I may have been in a society which maps mm -hmm. very similarly to this one. But if I go in with those expectations, I may not actually see what the differences are. Right. Mm -hmm. And so to go in and say, I'm incompetent here. Mm -hmm. I'm a beginner. Yeah. I think sometimes in, when we step into cultures where there are a lot of similarities, it, it almost calls you up short even more because you're not expecting it. Yeah. So yeah. Then, then you're really going to back up and figure out what happened. Yeah, yeah, great. I just wanted to add to it because I was in the first <coughs> group and then next was in the group as well. And the whole time we were doing the project, we kept referring to what we were doing at the time as like being low context. Like we were just like making slight jokes about it. And it was really interesting because um, we were working with um, Jemana from Jordan, so she's uh -huh. more high context than us in theory. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't get to know her that well for the presentation. Sure. But like we were just joking, like, well, in a low-context way, we're just going to have you, you do this portion, we're going to do this portion, and then we'll just put it together. Is that cool? You know, and so it was really interesting in that way. Yeah. 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 She can put up with that. Yeah, yeah she's pretty great. Yeah. Adaptability. Yeah. 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 yeah, we played a lot with that. <laughs> we we made a lot of fun. There are probably some other things you're going to play with as you see as, as these go along. Now, how about the... Um, and what was this? That was um, Janet Bennett's Cultural Marginality. Oh, Cultural Marginality, right. And you were in the group. I was. Uh, um, well, one of the things we looked at was how a lot of other Africans sort of find themselves stuck in Morocco and route to <coughs> And so there are a lot of people living in Morocco who are culturally marginal citizen beings. Mm -hmm. And so... I don't know, something that might be interesting to look at is how we're there, we're not part of the culture of Morocco, but neither are a lot of other people who are mm -hmm. from the continent but still sort of struggling with that re the cultural norms of the region as well. Yeah, it's a big transit point, and there are people who live there for generations in transit as well. There's a book called In and Out of Morocco, which was on one of the SIT study abroad syllabi. It's a fabulous book about one community in Morocco that is a transitional migrant community. So if you're interested in that topic, I, I highly recommend it. So. And also, um, another interesting thing that I was like thinking about from that group is that um, traditionally Morocco was an emigrant mm -hmm. um, society where they were sending a lot of their people to work in Spain. Mm -hmm. And once the same time that that was kind of coming to an end, uh, more people were immigrating into Morocco. So mm. just the demand for jobs was already so high. Mm. And then so it's like almost like the population like doubled in terms of working. And mm -hmm. so like just the strain that that puts on a country and its economy. Mm -hmm. so yeah. that was, I didn't really know about that yeah. before. Yeah, yes. So these are just some, this is this piece of bringing theory into experience. This is the theory, you know, you're about to have the experience. We're about to have the experience. Um, I want to um, shift here for a second and keep track of, let me just tear this off so we have the agenda show. Is there a paper in here? Yeah. Let me put this up here.